Hello Facebook. <clears throat> so I said I'd do this um, and I'm doing it really just for a bit of fun and also uh, just to get a bit of engagement and just uh, spark a bit of debate. Um, it was it's something I put out the other day um, saying that anybody was interested in me doing my life through vinyl because I've kind of reignited my love for vinyl which I've never really lost but I've kind of got back into it a lot recently and uh yeah I it, I tell you what it was it was this book this book it's probably backwards in there but 100,000 101,000 albums to hear before you die it's proper thick and there's some awesome stuff in there and I was I'm going to flick through to sat by the computer most of the time and the reason it's sat by the computer is because I signed up to Spotify. Mm. The devil mm. and all that. Um, because there was stuff that I wanted to listen to because I wanted to hear it before I considered buying it on vinyl. Now, actually, it's opened me up to a whole load of other stuff. Um, but it's tended to make me go back and look at my old stuff in a different light. Um, more than it has introduced me to more new music, which I found quite interesting. Um... So maybe a bit more reflective on my own record collection um, and what that record collection actually means to me. My record collection and my CD collection is pretty vast. Um, I can never get rid of any of it because it's all extremely important to me and my record collection and my CD collection is the story of my life, uh, almost in a chronological order and there's a memory virtually to every disc and every record and every tape, I've still got a whole load of tapes that was ever bought. So, yeah, I just thought it was a curious thing to go back and start looking at some of the stuff um, that I have had in the past and, and, and some of the stuff that I bought and was not sure why I bought them um, or some of the stuff that was very meaningful to me. Um, yeah, so shall we get started? Oh, and a shout out to another guy on YouTube um, who also does something very similar to this, a guy in America. Um, he's actually a hi-fi reviewer but started doing his life in vinyl. And I, when I saw the, I had the idea, I checked it out and he was doing one. He's actually way better than me. Production values are superb and blah, blah, blah. blah. But anyway, that's a different matter. But yeah, uh, go check him out as well. Andrew, somebody or other, I forget his name. I could find out later anyway so uh my very 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 first album um the very first album that i ever bought actually no the very first album that was ever bought for me <laughs> was a shaking stevens album now i don't have that because i don't have it anymore but it was a shaking stevens album it wasn't even one of his famous ones so it didn't have any of the famous songs like green door or this old house or anything like none of that just a whole bunch of stuff that you probably never ever heard from him. That's got lost in the midst somewhere. I've no idea. The very first record I ever bought, album that I ever bought, Madness Absolutely. This, to this day, is still an absolute classic. Baggy trousers, embarrassment. Return of the Lost Palmer 7. I mean, it, there's some genius stuff on here. And it's not all the comedy stuff that people think that Madness was all about. There's some really, really good tunes on here. Off the back of the Scar movements for, you know, the beat and um, the specials. Madness were very much in that mix. And I adored Madness. I adored Madness for years. The first 7-inch single I ever bought was Wings of a Dog by them. Which is a cover version, but it's... Anyway... But this album, very, very first album, this is 1978, 79, so I would have been about six or seven. Yeah. Um, and it got played to death. It's, so, it's, it's, I mean, it's in pretty good nick still. Um, got a whole history of the band to that point on the inside cover, which I always used to read back to front. And look at that. It just goes to show what care I take of my records. It is like new and it's been played to death so yeah a very important record for me for that because that started me off in music and my love of music 
and it shall be a precious album. It never gets listened to anymore, I have to say, but it's a precious album to me. The album that started me down the whole track of my complete love of music. There's a few, but there's one that really, really took off and, and sent me down a track I was not expected to go down. I'd been listening to lots of stuff from my parents. I used to listen to a lot of my mum's Elvis records. I used to listen to my dad's Shadows records. Still love Hank Marvin. Um, I used to listen to some of my dad's opera stuff. Um, I, I, I still have a huge sweet spot, sweet spot for um, Nessa and Dorma by, well, the Pavarotti version. Um, the one that was actually, bizarrely, played as the theme tune for the Italia 90 World Cup. That version gives me goose pimples every time I hear it. Every single time. But that was stuff that I was listening to from my parents. The album that took me in a completely different direction and has sent me down that path pretty much for very much for forevermore was... <laughs> okay. I'll show you that part first. Slippery and Wet. Bon Jovi. I know. Cheese-tastic and I don't really care. Because this was the soundtrack to an entire year for me. I have vivid, vivid memories from when I was about, what was this, 86, 14, 15, of listening to this at school, um, and listening to and talking to people about, oh, have you heard the new Bon Jovi track? And knowing that I got the album and so on. This is a very rare version of that album. Um, I'll show you the front in a minute. Um, some people who know will already know um and yeah it, it from 15 to 16 was that transition into going from your gcses into a levels going to college and from then on it was like right that's it i'm growing my hair i'm wearing leather i'm just gonna wear black and jeans and blah 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 and it just went from there and i just became your archetypal grebo rocker um leather jacket bobber boots ripped jeans, black t-shirts with everything, with every band name you could possibly get onto it. But this is the album that started it. This one. This was the very one. Now, I know it's all sweetness and sugar and light now compared to some of the stuff you can hear, but this was quite chunky stuff for me back in the day. And it was a bit of a revelation. And the energy release that came from this when you were listening to it and getting into it and playing loud on my dad's... Well, when I commandeered it, I ended up basically getting it with... That turntable, which I've recently refurbed, but that is 40 plus years old and it still knocks spots off 90% of the stuff that's out there. It is a spectacular piece of kit. I've got my dad's old Celestian speakers just down here, which I don't use anymore. I've got a bunch of upgraded stuff now, but um, yeah, loud, 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 this album. This album in its particular format has a particular significance because this I thought I was being extremely rebellious when I bought this. I specifically did some research to buy this. And I could only find it. I think I got this from a place called ST Records in Dudley. On the... Um, yeah, ST Records, I think it was. And they used to have loads of rare heavy metal stuff and rock and whatnot. Um, but... Yeah. That's not the cover, is it? That's not the cover that everyone knows from this album. Anyway, let's turn that back over. Um... Yeah. American or Japanese import banned in this country. Couldn't get it. Um, you could only get certain copies of that. But yes, I thought I was being very uh, underhand and underground and rebellious when I bought that album. It's quite interesting that um, it means nothing nowadays and there's twice as bad and the album's just seen as a bit of a novelty album now. But it's still, to this day, played in the car on CD. It's still... Every now and then it comes out just just to listen to well the tracks. I mean, let it rock. What an opener! Uh, Wild in the streets is probably one of the bounciest, most amazing mental songs that I've ever heard. I, I've seen Bon Jovi live probably about seven or eight times, and they've only ever played Wild in the streets once, and it was epic. And my cousin Jason was there with me. It was at the NEC, and they played it at the end as an encore of the second time we saw them on the New Jersey tour. There you go. There's a bit of trivia. But yeah, Wanted Dead or Alive, seeing that played 
in front of 40, 50, 60,000 people at Milton Keynes Bowl when we went to the Milton Keynes gig with no ticket, virtually no money. Me and my cousin drove down there on the off chance we might get a ticket from a tout. We did. We didn't get fleeced. We got it res relatively cheaply. And it was one of the most epic gigs I think I've ever been to. And I've been to a lot of gigs. That's why I'm deaf. Oh, my word. Something special. That will live on in the memory till the day I die. Um, it was extraordinary. Yeah. Good times. Good times. But that quickly led me down a rabbit hole. And I had discovered rock and heavy metal in a big way. And I didn't realise that you could get anything more than that. And then I found Iron Maiden. Now, it wasn't Number of the Beast that got me going. It wasn't their eponymous first album. It wasn't anything that was after. It wasn't Seventh Son. It was this album, Killers, their second album that I got first. Um, and I don't know why. I still can't remember because Number of the Beast was out by that point. I got this one first. Maybe it was on a deal. But I remember buying this from a record shop whilst I was at college. I was at college at a place called King Edwards in Stourbridge. Um, uh, about five miles away from where I used to live. Um, bit of a fancy arsed posh school. I wasn't, a, I didn't fit in there, but I had some really good friends. I had a bloody good time while I was there because that the whole educational system that was working there wasn't working for me. So I decided to put my interests elsewhere. Um, and in the breaks, we would go over to the shopping centre. And there'll be a record shop in there. And I think it was an hour price or something like that. I can't remember. And go and have a browse. And whatever pocket money I'd earned from my waitering job at Pizza Hut that I had at the time. Or, or whatever it was that I was doing. Would get spent on records. And this was the first Iron Maiden record that I bought out. And it was probably one of the very first records that had sent me down a, the proper heavy metal and rock genre. And... Yeah, it's interesting listening to this now because obviously it hasn't got Bruce Dickens, it's got Paul Diano as the lead singer. And the songs holds up, but it's very different and weird listening to his voice, even though I listen to this gazillions of times. Wrathchild and, and Purgatory, Drifter, Killers, they're all amazing tunes, but sound so very different to the stuff that came from Number of the Beast onwards, even though the music was the same, or very similar. So yeah, it's an odd album and also very odd circumstances of why I got it because I knew that the other stuff was out, but this was the first one I got. Great album though, great album. But good times at that time as well. That was good times. I met a, some lifelong friends there. Um, my friend James and Robin, who are still two of my best friends. I don't get to see them half as much as I should, but they're still two of my best, best friends. Um, and... We had some damn good times together. And there was a whole bunch of other people that, I mean, even now with, with, with friends who I've known since longer than I've known my own sister. People like Kate and, uh, and Lucy, who I've known since college and uh, still see them. We're all sort of still sort of doing the same things. We all still like the same music. We're all still into the same kind of stuff. In fact, I met up with them, some of them not that long ago. We went to go and see Legend of Summit Dustbin and the Wonder stuff and a whole bunch of other stuff that came much, much later. Um... Yeah, good, good times. Real good times. So going on from Iron Maiden. Now this has a lot of memory for me because I have one specific memory of it. And one specific memory that makes me laugh because it was a memory of me hiring this record from Dudley Library and going back to listen to it because everyone had raved about it and said, oh, it's amazing, you've got to go and go listen to this album, blah, 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 blah. And I was like, hmm. One, I don't know much about them. Two, I, I, they sound really heavy to me. I've never really heard anything by them, blah, 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 blah. So me and my cousin Jason, I went to go and get it from the library, brought it back, and me and my cousin Jason sat in my bedroom and put it on that record player with the rest of the old gear stuff that I've got. Turned the volume up, sat back and just listened. And by about track two, 
We were chatting and not really listening to the music at all. After about track four, track five, we were sort of saying, I'm not sure I like this. It's, it's not my thing. Which is ironic because now I think it's one of the greatest albums that has ever been written. Ever. Not just heavy metal or rock. Ever. And that album? Master of Puppets. Metallica. This is the archetypal heavy rock album. There is a lot of other stuff that people would say, oh yeah, Black Sabbath, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, blah, blah, blah. But if you want a mishmash of virtually every kind of style of rock and put it into something that will blow your head off, this is it. This is goose pimple inducing stuff. Um, I mean, just the tracks. Master of Puppets itself, Battery, Welcome Home Sanitarium, the greatest track probably of any Metallica album, Orion. And if not Orion, that whole album has won. Yeah, give it its due. Spectacular album. I adore it. It's one of my all-time favourite albums. This is a this is a virtually brand new purchase um, because my old vinyl version literally fell apart. Um, the CD snapped because just so much usage and play on these. I, I, I know the lyrics, I know the guitar licks, and I don't even play guitar. So I am an expert at Metallica air, air guitar. This is... Oh, Tennis rackets have been broken through this. Um, it's a special, special album, that. Not to everyone's taste, but it's a very, very special album. And that memory of me sitting there with Jason on my bed and both of us saying, it's not that great. And both of us, in much later life, thinking this is one of the greatest things that has ever been put to vinyl. Um, is quite weird. But again, more good times. That was another good time. But I think I was probably still at college with that. I was still actually able to go and borrow records from the library. Um, I was still probably yeah I was still living at home, um, with my parents. Um, probably annoying the crap out of them because I've been playing this far too loud. Yeah, great album. So this next album is off the back of all of that. It's kind of where I ended up going for a brief bit and then kind of coming back from a bit. And this album has a significant memory for me for me because it was. The album that was bought a few months ahead of the very first gig that I ever went to, of any of any kind, uh, music show or anything. I, I'd never been to a gig, and by God, what a baptism of fire. Now, this gig, I was not expecting anything. I thought, oh, they might just play the album, or we'll go and get entertained. I did not expect to come out with a black eye, um, a very, very, very bruised arm, very bruised ribs, uh, a ripped T-shirt and a feeling of euphoria and floating on cloud nine like I don't think I've ever felt since. That was an... Ex for a first gig, it was just unbelievable. And the band? Wasp! <laughs> oh my God! They blew the stage to pieces and so did the crowd it was immense I, I it was my first time experience of a mosh pit a proper proper hardcore mosh pit first time experience of a gig um first time experience other than one other time in the long distance past my first proper experience of volume sheer ear splitting ear bleeding nose popping inducing eye bulging volume and the sense of absolute release of being able to just let go, let the hair down and go for it. And everyone was in the same boat and everyone was looking after each other. But by God, did people go for it. And it was just unreal. And this is a great album. It's a great album. I mean, it's probably they've they've done one album before this, which was probably seen as as good as this. But this is the one for me I, I like because it was that era um, of that kind of slightly chunky hair rock um, um, we can see by the, the back you know they're all a bit he big head but you wouldn't notice by listening to it it's pretty heavy stuff um, and they've done other stuff since then that was nowhere near as good as this um, this album is a classic the real me 
of course, which was a Who cover version, which is, there's rips into it, but it, I mean, obviously not as good as the Who's version, but it's still a bloody good song. Thunderhead, <laughs> the Neutron Bomber. There was just, it's, it's a bonkers album from a bonkers time, from a bonkers memory. Um, again, probably doesn't get listened to that often anymore. Once a year, if that. But great memories from that. Great, great memories from great times. Um, still at college or still at school? I was probably at college, so about 19... When was this? 1989. There you go. 17. College. And yeah, but a heck of an experience. So there you go. That's my first one, two, three, five albums. Um, if anybody's interested, I'll do another one of these and I'll go through some more because it's it gets eclectic after this. It doesn't just go down the uh, the heavy metal route, let's put it that way. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think and I'll um, I'll tell you some more. Um, but yeah, it's, this is going to be fun. Looking back on some of these stuff, it's been it's been interesting. Just to, like kind of planning out which albums I'm gonna. There's some stuff that you are not gonna see. And there's some stuff that no one's really bothered by, and I bought it for the whatever. But there is some good stories behind, behind the others. And um, it'd be interesting to see if anybody else does something similar to this. I'd love to see and hear other people's versions of this. I don't think it'll happen. But if you get the urge, do it. It's good fun. It takes you back a bit. So, yeah. Thanks for that. And I'll speak to you soon.